Okay. Uh, tell us about trusted types. Well, I'm not going to tell you, but I just have a reaction, which has seemed like an, an awful lot of mechanism, most of which could just be implemented in JavaScript. Um, the one exception is um, having the various DOM API um, entry points enforce this um, is something that actually has to be implemented in the browser itself um, because otherwise, you know, there's no, um, you know, it's trivial to go get around it. Um, Could somebody uh, paste a link of the stuff that you guys are looking at? Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. <clears throat> but it just seemed like an awful lot of mechanism bound to a lot of very specialized use cases. Um, um, most of which was driven by the, um, you know, stuff that's already in the, in the DOM API. Um, and, uh, so can you describe it? I mean, I'm really cold on this stuff. Oh, okay. Well, let's wait till we get the, the link. Um, or maybe I can, let's see what that, yeah. Um, uh, I pasted the OCAP uh, JS link. This is the one that has the link to the other one, uh, just so we can keep the discussions under this thread. That would be nice. Um, okay. I'm going to paste the other link um, if somebody just want, wants to skip to that. Yeah, and I can I can just do a screen share so we can we can look at it. Oh, you... actually, yeah. Why don't you do that, Chip? Because that okay, I do ha I do have I have followed the links. I do see the material. But if you do a screen share, then we can see uh, where your focus is. Yeah, for some reason, my screen share button is not working. It's grayed out. Um, Let me promote you quickly. Uh, John, I just noticed that your um, uh, John David is hyphenated. Do you like going by John or John David? Uh, you can, oh, John or uh, JD works. John David too, but like, let's keep it simple, JD. Oh, JD, that's right, that's right, okay. Mm -hmm. No worries. Um, so I don't know quite what it was that uh, uh, Solid just did, but it did not. It did not enable my ability to do screen sharing. Um, you should see uh, under the video the the black bar at the bottom. It should have a green share button in the middle. Share. Uh, yeah, like it's a green box with an arrow coming out of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. Um, if you click on the arrow next, no, sorry, if you click on it directly, it will ask you what you want to share. Okay. All right. Um, can, am I sharing? Yes, you are. Is it showing, is it also showing my little inset window with all of the Zoom widgetry? Uh, no, the Zoom window is kind of like if you're interacting with it, we just see your mouse like doing weird things. So we don't see the actual rendering of it. That's, that's weird. Zoom is, I really don't like Zoom. They, they actually all do that. All, all um, um, like Skype used to do that before they switched to an HTML only mode, right? So. Chip, we do see uh, you okay. trusted types. Trusted type spec, work in progress. Um, so I'm just going to skim through this pretty quick because um, essentially the idea is they have this notion of a, a DOM XSS injection sync, which is essentially um, um, anywhere in the DOM where a string could possibly be interpreted as executable code or as a URL. Um, and then they come up with this notion of a, a trusted type, which is essentially a wrapper around a string that, that provides essentially a branding uh, hook. Okay. And, and then they define a whole bunch of specialized species of that. So they have trusted HTML and trusted script and trusted script URL and trusted URL. And um, they're just different species of things. And then they revise the 
um, the DOM uh, API so that you can flip some switch. I'm not quite sure how you do that, where at, at, w at which point it will not accept a string directly, but will only accept one of these and extract the string from it. Okay. So it's essentially a branding mechanism. Um, and, um, and then, and then they go, go into this long, complicated thing with, with uh, uh, policies and with a, some kind of mechanism for generating, taking a string and generating one of these trusted type objects from it and how that can happen. And they, you know, they provide essentially a, a callback so that you can register your, um, your thing, which will, which will either bless or, or uh, transmogrify strings as necessary um, and return one of these. And then you do an initialization. Um, uh, before, before you move on from this example that we see right here, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, like example two. Okay. Because uh, it caught my eye, like we're, we're, they're returning URL dot to string. And I, I, that, you know, the examples are completely um, like what, what's the magic about um, uh, calling the URL constructor with two string? I'm, I'm sorry, you, you, got, you guys are getting ahead of us, or ahead yeah. of me. Just, I, I don't know this API. Just talk through what example two is trying to say. I, I think example two is, 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 is hand-waving distraction, actually. Okay, so uh, talk, give me some simple example, example one, whatever, uh, but just talk me through in concretely what so, so what, you have what this, thing, what this API is trying to do uh, before we criticize it. Okay, so and I said I've I've only read this at a surface level myself. So you're getting a a, a fairly amateurish summation. But essentially, what they're doing is they're providing branded wrappers for strings, mm -hmm. and then um, in 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 a set of of uh, of, 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 I guess at this point, four different types, which they have defined as part of their spec. Okay. Uh, so for example, like trusted HTML, which oh. is a type that contains a string and is somehow brand checkable to di di discern that, that this, this object is a one of these. Okay, so uh, the, um, the blue boxes are unfortunately in web idle what, how, does, how does this appear um, uh, to, to JavaScript? What does JavaScript code say to interact with this thing? On Chrome, uh, there's a global already that it's available called tr Trusted Types. And all the examples actually use that global or a member of that global. Um, if, if I can just uh, maybe uh, shorten the distance, uh, I think it's kind of like how data URLs uh, at some point, uh, and I might be wrong, but at some point I've noticed that in certain, um, at least in Safari at some point, um, when you create a data URL from a page and you try to somehow transfer that string and consume it from another page, um, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't allow it because it wasn't a trusted data URL. Um, I, I think that's actually too far down in the weeds. Yeah, the, 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 I, just want, I just want to understand the basic branding point. There's, a, okay. there's, the an basic. Object, there's an object that wraps a string. The object somehow is branded. Yes. Uh, and there's a, there's, there has to be a way to... And, and there's a way to... The object, and there has to be a way to test whether, the, whether an object is branded. Yeah, actually, I don't know that there's any way to test whether an object is branded except built into the browser. Because, okay. it, it, and maybe there is, but I haven't, I haven't analyzed it in that level of detail. Okay. The, the key change is um, 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 that the... the implementation of the DOM API in the browser can somehow, and I'm not quite sure how, you, how, is, how it's initialized, but can be told for this page um, where previously this, this 
this, this method in the DOM API would have taken a string. Uh, instead, it must take one of these. Okay. And then, and then it does a brand check on it. If it passes okay. the brand check, it pulls the string out and uses that. Otherwise, it rejects it. Okay, so that, so that actually sounds sensible to me. Yes, um, yeah, I, I think so as well. Okay, so um, how does one create a, a, a branded object around a string? Okay, so the next thing they have is they have this, um, and this is where example one kind of comes into play. Okay. So they have this gr global called trusted types. Okay. And you pass it, and it has a, has a, a, a thing called, uh, a method called create policy. Okay. And that, uh, you give it a, 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 a label, which I think is just a, uh, just a label. Um, and then it can have uh, a set of methods, which are defined by the API, which will take a string um, uh, and, and return a, um, a, a, a one of these. So my trusted sanitizer is something that the user of this would write. Yes. Well, that the, the, the we have to be careful when we use the word user because the the whole point here is mediating between two different species of user. There's the user who is the person who's setting up a page who is concerned with mm -hmm. um, um, protecting themselves against the threat that this is supposed to protect you against. Okay. And then there is the user who is creating scripting, which is going to go on that page, which might um, want to use the DOM APIs. Okay. Um, and what this does is this is essentially saying that second class of user is, is, is um, restricted in their usage of the DOM APIs to strings which are created by passing them through this policy um, mechanism, which, which um, mints a um, a new uh, one of these trusted type objects um, in response to a string um, given um, a in, in, in this case the user of the first type can provide a, a sanitizer which would, would will do various things either um, you know only allow uh, some predefined literals or um, not let you do it at all but uh, um, um, or, or pass it through a, you know, a, in this case, with, if the, the, the trusted type is representing HTML, it passes it through an HTML sanitizer um, and, and so on. Okay, so, the, so just st staying with this example. So my trusted sanitizer is written by the, the page author. Mm -hmm. uh, it is supposed to um, uh, return an object I th no, I, th I think it, it. I think it takes a string and returns a string. Oh, it returns a string, and then the resulting string is wrapped in some kind of wrapper. In this case, it would be, be wrapped in a trusted HTML uh, wrapper. Okay. Yeah. And, has, and what does that wrapper look like? It has internal methods. I. I think they are shown later down down in the spec. I think one of them is data. That may be like internal uh, properties. Sorry. Um, perhaps I believe the only the only interesting method really is um, to string, which which presumably obtains the string that that is now considered to be trusted. Yes, and most of the mechanism that's here is 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 associated with this, this, this whole policy um, machinery, which is, which is your, your, your factory for creating these trusted type objects that you put in place. And this is what all of this API that I'm scrolling through is all about. And um, it just seems, it, 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 it seems needlessly complicated and it seems like it's, Highly specialized to the the um, the DOM API. Um, when I, I think it would be cleaner if they broke it into a um, 
you know, a, a general purpose branding mechanism. And then, and here is a use of this branding mechanism that will be uh, observed by the uh, DOM API. Um, okay. But instead it, 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 it kind of, it, it bakes all of these things together. So the threat model here is that uh, you're trying to keep the adversary from running any scripts within this page. But if the adversary does run scripts within the page, uh, the um, it's game. Uh, uh, this is not attempting any kind of defense ag against an adversary that is able to run scripts in the page. It's Correct. I believe this is this is this in the same vein as um, um, you know the usual recipes for, for protecting yourself against SQL injection, um, which is rather than assembling a um, you know, a SQL uh, expression by doing string concatenation or something, um, you have a, um, um, you have a, 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 a thing which assembles it for you under the control of, of something which presumably is more rigorous, um, which is different from the, uh, we're not going to use, um, any text that came from the user as part of what we use to construct a SQL uh, expression, we're going to use parameter substitution. Okay. Which is a much more reliable way to do the same thing. So altogether for us, you know, we're focused on a much finer grain threat model than they are. Yes. Uh, is, uh, first of all, is there any danger to our goals from this? And second of all, is there any way that this can help us with our goals? Um, I haven't read this closely enough to have a, a, a developed a, 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 what I would consider an informed opinion on that. Um, my, my sort of quick take is that um, this doesn't, this doesn't open up anything that we need to worry about other than just you know, once again, making the, 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 the already overcomplicated DOM API even more complicated. Um, 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 my, my main uh, uh, quibbles with this are just the, 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 the um, needlessly complex mechanism and the, um, the over-specialized uh, way it's used. But, um, those are those are more aesthetic uh, quibbles than um, issues with it, it, it introducing some fundamentally new um, uh, uh, hole in the in the in the uh, the, the uh, threat surface. Okay, so ne neither a liability nor an asset, especially from our perspective. Um, uh, but we certainly like the idea of branding in general. So in that sense, it's at least. A mild step along, um, you know, along some of the same path. Right, and if and if 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 um, you know one approach to take with this, um, which which I don't have time to do, but um, you know, if somebody were so motivated, would be to look at this from a perspective of, of a more general branding mechanism um, to see either if um, there is general mechanism that would be of broader value that could be factored out of this, um, which one would think might help make this more appealing to, to, to some, some folks. Although I suspect that the people who are, uh, I, I don't know anything about the politics of this, but my suspicion is that the people who are, 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 are promoting this um, aren't, you know, are, are a small specialized community and they're not getting a lot of pushback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so, guys, I think I think that uh, if there's no surprises here, I think this is something we can safely mostly ignore. Uh, so, what else? Uh, so, a bunch of people uh, have joined since we started this topic. Uh, what would people like to talk about? Um, just before we move on from here, I'm thinking that this could uh, could be useful for the um, uh, sandboxing effort that we're doing. So the, the frame, um, because potentially at some point we are dealing with um, the HTML uh, source 
Um, and if trusted types is going to be something that, um, um, you know, that is coming along the way, then um, it, it actually ties very closely to what would be accepted by the uh, CSP policy of the frame. So I, I'd like to see if that aligns, you know, like dig maybe a little bit deeper into that or if anybody has um, some insights mm -hmm. on how that would relate to CSP, maybe come up, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks, that would be nice. All right. Are they planning on, is part of this proposal involve any CSP extensions to people who are aware of this proposal? Yeah, um, I think if, if we jump to, um, like I pasted a link in the chat, if we jump to that link, um, it will uh, show us a, a table of things where um, they will enforce um, the policy on the values that will actually be um, passed to these objects. So um, yeah, Chip, I, I don't know if you can see the chat. Um, not while I'm sharing. I think I'll have to just stop that. Okay. Um, I, I can share from my end. Sure. Yeah, so I was looking at this table, um, and it, it basically seems that all these properties of various um, uh, uh, things that you could usually pass just a string um, are, are going to be, um, you know, receiving enforcement of the trusted type. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Instead of having to use templates to make uh, the DOM tree well, no, 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 it still, it still doesn't help because our adversary model is one in which the adversary is running uh, JavaScript inside the frame uh, and in which we want to be able to give it direct access to DOM nodes. Y yes, that's uh, true. But uh, still, if the adversary doesn't have the ability to brand strings, then, okay, if the adversary has programmatic access to DOM nodes, uh, genuine raw DOM nodes, but the uh, only accept trusted types flag is on, and the adversary does not have the ability to, to cause any strings to be branded, uh, does that prevent the adversary from using the DOM to cause scripts to be evaluated? That, that's what I would like to uh, think that this can be helpful for, because that seems like this is the model they're trying to go for. Uh, I think uh, I know where uh, Google um, felt the urge to actually look into this, um, mm -hmm. because they were pushing um, um, the web component specs. Um, mm -hmm. And um, with web components, you have a big problem, is that most of your DOM is created from strings. Um, the, um, the clever use of template elements um, um, has been uh, around from before web components. Like as soon as template element, elements came out, people have been using them to generate DOM elements. Um, it, it was only recently that when the, the template element itself got adopted that people backed their template string against it directly to generate nodes um, uh, from the generated output. So that, that mechanism requires a lot of um, trust on behalf of like what elements are being generated in this approach. Um, and I think this is you know, one, one pain point that this pack is trying to address. Um, so I'm thinking that if you create a frame um, somehow you control its trusted types, and then um, and then um, you make sure that everything goes through trusted types. Um, uh, it doesn't eliminate the need for the service worker potentially, um, but it's it's because going because the, because the trusted types is oh actually maybe it does no no because 
Well, okay, I'm confused about something. Yeah. Uh, if I've got access to DOM nodes, mm -hmm. build up a DOM tree programmatically without ever converting text to DOM nodes. Now, given their, um, is it the case that for every string that would be accepted by any of the DOM APIs that with this flag on, Yes. Strings have to be trusted strings. So, so I like the script element because they show that they are really targeting SRC as in the URL from which a script can come. Um, and, and the fact that they are actually uh, using the uppercase uh, of the class dot SRC, it implies to me that they're talking IDL level, not, uh, not JavaScript level. So it seems to me that uh, an object that I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you mean by IDL level rather than JavaScript level. Like not not calling uh, 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 an instance of HTML script element .src, but rather the object, um, you know, uh, the object um, implementing the interface um, HTML script element. Whenever the SRC value of that interface uh, is being set. Um, it will actually be a sync for which the policies will be enforced. So if you declaratively, uh, by, by means of navigating to a page, let's say, oh. assign the SRC of a script by having a, a DOM element be a, a, a script tag with SRC, then it will hit that sync as well. Uh, I believe so. Um, like the way they, they talk about it, yeah. Um, so, so it, it seems to me that it's going to be the, the approach to actually tap or hook into declarative and uh, programmatical, um, um, you know, um, okay. assignments of such uh, aspects of these, um, you know, DOM. So, um, okay. So now that I'm starting to understand this, um, if this table is the complete list of all of the ways in which you can prove the DOM to um, dereference a URL, and it's the complete list of all of the ways in which you can provoke the DOM to evaluate a script, uh, which seems to be the intention, um, then if we intercept all of these, then why do we still need service workers? It would seem like we might be able to just use this interception for all of the dangerous things that you can provoke a DOM to do by programmatic access. Yeah, the model I have so far uh, requires us uh, to um, back it against um, a, a, a container URL a URL that, um, that is different from the origin of the source page um, for which um, we are making sure that any of these uh, settable syncs um, do not uh, set to URLs that are not contained behind the container scope. Um, this proxy for URLs is the only approach where we can um, where we can um, influence what uh, ends up coming into the frame uh, for any particular resource. Um, if we are implementing this method to sandbox um, the current site from you know it's it's being served remotely with trusted type enforcement on it, um, that's a different approach altogether, I guess. But that requires that um, any SES um, sites would actually um, you know, enforce um, these policies on their own pages. OK. So, so um, well, I mean, so let, let me just take a simple hypothetical and see if I'm understanding. Uh, if we want to create a confined iframe uh, 
where we use where you know we're running SES in the iframe, so so all the JavaScript is taken care of, uh, but we want to give untrusted code direct access to the DOM nodes of the iframe, uh, and we deny to the let's call it guest code. Uh, we deny to the guest code the ability to brand any objects as being a trusted HTML or trusted script or a trusted URL. Um, and we put the DOM, the DOM tree of the frame into the mode where it only accepts uh, the branded strings, the trusted types, then we have the so so obviously that those simple restrictions where you completely deny it the ability um is is you know doesn't emulate a normal environment but i'm trying to understand the safety first uh so if we did that then the um the javascript code the javascript guest code the ses guest code could still call the uh, DOM APIs to manipulate the DOM tree, uh, but uh, it could not provoke the DOM into evaluating scripts and it could not provoke the DOM into causing network access. Is that correct? Um, it seems to be um, the intent of all of this. Okay. I, I believe that is the intention. Okay. But so, I. I would I would just try to say that the most secure approach would be to to um, 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 you know take over trusted types and and close them up, uh, but uh, a security model would rather actually um, create a, a, a you know glass ceiling uh, on on what is allowed to be trusted. Um, so that you can still, you will need the trusted types API if you have a web component that is trying to be safe. Um, but you just want to make sure that when additional policies come in, they're attenuated so that they cannot violate the confinement policies. Okay. So, so, um, uh, so the question that I want to, uh, to focus on is, does this mechanism allow us to do confined uh you know confined web content or web content means uh ses plus direct exposure to uh to to dom nodes of its frame uh, but where we're virtualizing the trusted types api which we can certainly do trusted types is not part of javascript it doesn't get whitelisted uh and then the um, the host code, the host SES code and setting up the environment for the guests is able to provide whatever virtualization of the trusted type API it wants. Is the host code in a position to confine the guest code uh, without using service workers at all? And it seems like uh, the, the severe answer where we're not trying to emulate a normal environment, we're just trying to prevent. Uh, it seems like the answer to that one is yes, that we're successfully preventing without using uh, the inertness of templates mm -hmm. and without using a service worker. Um, I, I believe um, it's worth actually exploring. Um, it is it's it is going to be uh, this or that uh, you're absolutely right in, in the way you analyzed um, you broke it down um, so so here's the model I'm thinking um, um, a SES host page um, oh, I'm sorry I'm sorry can I, can I interrupt you I'm, I just noticed something that's missing here yeah there's script URL string but there's no script Yes, oh, there, I'm sorry. There is. There is the, the, the second and third element script string. Yes. Uh, yeah. So so the text content when you have a script that has a body. Um, so so. Um, what, what about inline event handlers? Well, I, I'd like us to start looking into this uh, cautiously. Um, 
because uh, so far the only browser that seems to have any affiliation with it is, is Chrome. Um, I have not seen, uh, except, you know, like splashes that came towards um, ECMAScript, like the TC39 has uh, a proposal that, or maybe more than one, um, to make uh, minor modifications um, so that trusted types can, can actually um, handle certain strings. Um, so I, I, did, I did not understand that. Um, in, in, in the, um, I guess this is the one. Um, so yeah, there's a proposal, a draft zero. Um, that Mike, Mike Samuel, by the way, is one of the authors on this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so it seems like it's having traction within the spec bodies. I see. Um, and it's going to be a different beast. Like it cannot really complement the service worker approach. Um, but, but the model here will be that the, the secure host is going to be um, served by the remote itself. Um, and when the secure host loads, it will probably, probably create an iframe uh, which will be uh, about blank at this point. Um, and it will uh, then take its uh, trusted type global. Um, and then it will start to populate it with the HTML DOM somehow, um, which is a trusted type as it's being populated into a blank iframe. Um, and it will have to be sandboxed. So I don't know how we're going to have access to the trusted types, but retain some level of sandboxing so that the um, frame, the iframe page cannot uh, reach to the parent of the frame. I didn't follow that at all. Yeah, so, so I think let, let's explore this um, further. And when we do, maybe there could be a better way to, um, I mean, it's, it needs some brainstorming, which I didn't you know, get any chance to do. Hey, this is JF here. Um, um, the idea of the, the branding mechanism here in place, the, the idea of branding at creation and, um, Having those uh, those sync or those uh, consumer uh, validating uh, the branding is something that we do uh, in Locker. We have the exact same mechanism, and our concern is to defend against blobs, which can be turned into object URL and then uh, used to inject uh, JavaScript into iframes into uh, window location and and escape the sandboxing mechanism that we have. So um, the problem with Blob is um, the API in order to validate the content of them is async. You need a file reader basically to get to get to to read them. But the usage of the Blob you need a file reader to read what the content of a Blob. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, so you have, you have an async process. So that the fact that it's async, it means that we cannot validate the content of a blob at the moment of usage inside a, a, a uh, for example, in the create object URI, URI uh, API. Okay. So at the time that method is used, we need to be in possession of the answer. Is this content safe? So the way that we mitigate is all blob on creation are inspected and um, their sick or their behavior is recorded and at, uh, and, and ident they identified as uh, trusted or not. And uh, you can do whatever you want with them, but uh, some APIs are, are restricted. Some blobs that if they contain a script tag cannot be used with some APIs, for example. Can you explain what you mean? Uh, what, what is a blob? A blob is a, a, a browser object 
that can contain uh, large binary data, basically, and there are various types of blobs. Uh, you can have XML, you can have just plain text, you can have just about anything. There, there's a MIME type attached to them. And so they can be converted into a URL. And uh, that URL can be consumed in by the browser API in various scenarios as if it was a real URL uh, going to resource somewhere. Mm. And so uh, it's very easy to create a fake HTML page, uh, put it in the blob, create an object URL out of the blob, and then you, you, know, you can use that URL as, um, as if it was uh, coming from a third party website or, or anything. And that uh, usually the code evaluates in, well, it does evaluate in the, if there's a script tag in the, outside of our sandboxing mechanism. So we have to uh, block them or filter them, uh, depending on the case. So, um, so it, uh, the Salesforce uh, taming of the DOM, um, are, are you, are you giving the untrusted code direct access to the raw DOM nodes themselves? We don't. We, uh, we, we have um, uh, wrappers or membrane or proxies around those objects. Okay. Yeah, we don't give them. So we, add to the, we, we have, uh, we whitelist the APIs. So if something new comes up, uh, well, we don't, obviously by default, it's not supported, it's exposed. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we do um, have a specific alternate behavior or distortion uh, for the APIs that we know as being malicious. Uh, does your um, does the membrane that you build in front of the DOM is it is it similar to the membrane that Domato from Kaha built in front of the DOM? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's ours is very it's it's based on metadata, so we describe the object using metadata, and there's 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 a there's a mix of system, but the core is for the, for the DOM is to use metadata where we define what type uh, for each method, what type of uh, um, method needs to replace the native one or what type of property need to be to replace the, uh, the original one and what type of filtering we need to do. So um, if the, the direction that we've been exploring lately um, is uh, to do the um, uh, to do the confinement uh, of web content with uh, without membraning the DOM, uh, would that be a significant benefit to you if we found a good way to do that safely? Um, it could be. Um, I think um, we've been looking at it from different angles. Um, um, there's in order to have access to the DOM, um, there are various uh, concerns in place, various different ways to deal with the problem. One is the fact that the sandboxing in, in our system is multi-tenancy. So a DOM element, uh, it's not only yet you have a system mode and a user mode, is we're in a situation where we, ha we have a system mode and various users. Right. I mean, so I, I, I've been assuming that that's that's yeah. part of the SES threat model in general. So when I talk, yeah, about yeah. So uh, we're working on a on 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 a, on a system where we basically um, uh, by by careful analysis we come up with the uh, conclusion that the best thing we can do is implement something similar to the iframe semantic where uh, there's an area on the page that uh, represents your iframe, it's your, it's your content. And there's a very strong boundary around it where, where the only data that comes in and out uh, and then can uh, go to other users is the equivalent of uh, 
the structure clone or the uh, safe data passing defined defined in the, in the specs and except for a communication between that sandbox and the dom um, they are uh, you know you we, we're looking at patching the dom we can patch the dom api the native objects uh, so there's there are things we can do at that level but obviously the, we can interfere with uh, code being loaded by different users and uh, they might want to modify their prototypes so um, that's one limitation of that system uh, the other one is uh, is the membrane approach uh, and they are we have various types of membrane and the, the approach with the membranes is um, we preserve uh, compared to patching the DOM we preserve the semantic of the DOM outside of the sandbox and we have an alternate behavior inside of the sandbox so inside and and performance is 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 good for the places where this has been done with care uh, places where we use a more automated process and it can be refined and 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 accelerated but uh, yeah i'd be interested to hear about uh, any other approach that you're exploring and then we we can share also the uh, the different systems that we have put in place okay. we're currently re-evaluating the dom access there's there's always been the idea that we could patch the dom and then um except for the, the optimization of running javascript instead of a native code uh we would um we would be uh, we would gain uh, uh, compared to building objects or, or build, building proxies and running through proxies or, or the equivalent of proxy because we have other systems that don't use proxies. Um, the uh, block in the past is we believed at one point that we needed to have uh, a, a single DOM element visible in multiple uh, what we call a, what multiple realms. Um, we we we're moving away from that um oh. so there's yeah it's not, uh at we've i'm advocating that this the that model is not sustainable and we need it ends up having uh, forcing us to um uh, introduce um for lack of a better term uh same origin policy semantic where we need to have dumb semantic and the two things are not compatible uh, for example if you want to have events or you want to have callbacks uh, on, on your dumb elements uh, putting a membrane around a callback or around data passing which is not data anymore which can have function is 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 has proven to be problematic and uh, so we're moving away from that okay so every underlying dom node would only be manipulable by a, one given guest. Correct, exactly. Mm -hmm. Except for the uh, body and document uh, and head, which we fake uh, and present to every user. So every sandbox on the page believes that it's acting uh, alone. So uh, you want to do a uh, document that something or body that something you can put your properties on it and nobody else will see it. Same thing with the, uh, you know, same thing that we do for window in a, uh, or, or global in, in, in a realm. But uh, we're moving away a little bit from, uh, from what we, were, we started. Uh, the, the thing I just wanted to mention is the idea of trusted type is something that we stumble across and have uh, have created i wish we had seen the uh specs before because and, and i think our implementation is not too far we could uh isolate it in the sub module and have this idea of a trusted type in in, in locker uh very well uh very well labeled so you because this is not an attenuator it's a really a raw blob that we're using but then it it has uh uh, different behavior and expectations inside of the system compared to uh, the, the the tame DOM elements. Yeah, and um, we're probably gonna get there at one point. Can okay. I ask a question, uh, JF? Uh, uh -huh. Seeing the trusted spec, uh, the trusted type spec come along, or like whatever whatever it seems at this point, 
Uh, does it give you a sensation that maybe this will get you to recalculate things around it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think, uh, and we could, uh, we can contribute to it because I'd love. I think Blob needs to be to be there. We, it's focusing so far on strings, uh, but we know that uh, file Blob and media are object that uh, gain could gain uh, to uh, to have the same security properties or the same branding. Okay, so um, I, to my knowledge, so far the only browser that I saw this come up in at all is uh, Chrome. Yeah. Um, um, and there seems to be a polyfill. Um, oh. They, I don't know how that would work. Um, Do they claim the polyfill is secure? Uh, I, I just glimpsed really quickly while I was listening. So, um, but may, maybe this avenue is something um, of interest generally uh, for, for, for the group to dig in a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, um, any any advice on, on you know or any ideas on something to uh, you know towards that that would help us um, determine whether it's a viable um, um, route for us to explore or I don't know. Yeah, there there was a, a look in detail in, in the uh, the template uh, idea. So if your template is trusted, um, if and what you have to do in order say you imagine your template is generating generating html no, you don't me, have to run the sanitizer on the template stream okay, let, let me uh let me, you, let me just interrupt you for a moment to terminology yep. clarification uh in the conversations about the dom we've been referring to templates uh as in the web component DOM templates. yeah okay the, the template right. literal template objects yes yes okay yeah, I'm talking about the literal, template literal. So okay. trusted type and template literal have a, I believe, a very strong uh, uh, value because uh, if your template uh, literal is trusted, then you could run sanitization only uh, on the values that are injected in your template literal if it's if it's already trusted and trusted doesn't have it we we uh, just like pure modules um, pure modules can be um, in our system can uh, the equivalent of pure module uh, can be uh, uh, attained by uh, carefully vetting code and saying that yes this only produces fresh or frozen data and we don't have, need the, the, uh, the, the mechanism of the pure module. Uh, for, for templates, it's possible to, I, I could imagine a system where a carefully vetted template string would dramatically uh, accelerate uh, performance by reducing the amount of um, HTML sanitization that needs to happen. I'm sorry, I did not understand the point about not needing the mechanism of a pure module. Yes, yes. Oh, um, gee, I'm going in so, so many directions here. Um, okay. Um, when, um, when we are in a, in, in a realm, um, uh, we need to have a communication mechanism with the outside world. Um, in a web application, that mechanism uh, is a... Um, uh, one of the mechanism is a uh, message system. Another one is a um, is a, uh, a data service, and um, it would be a, um, it w um, there are uh, objects like that that um, can be safely used, knowing that they produce only pure data and they are immutable without having, uh, and this is done by a code review for very special pieces of code, and they don't need to run inside of a um, uh, container that enforces uh, purity, so something that doesn't have a, um, a scope, uh, a powerful scope, or uh, doesn't have to uh, go through a rewrite mechanism as we've been looking at to make those those items those item pure. So that's a way in, in some 
systems to gain uh, a little bit of flexibility, but get this, uh, uh, the, the, the focus is on the um, goal and not on the mechanism to get to the goal. As long as we have the security properties, uh, then the mechanism uh, doesn't have to be automated. Uh, is, uh, so uh, um, um, the, the, li the line of reasoning that leads us to require pure modules is yes. we want, as, as you're calling it, multi-tenancy, multiple, multiple mutually suspicious guests. Yes. Uh, within the same root realm. Yes. Without, without identity discontinuity. Yes. Uh, and uh, for modules that whose exports are pure um, uh, and that only consume pure imports, uh, we would also like multiple guests to be able to jointly use the abstractions that those modules define again without identity discontinuity. So yeah. for example, if a module defines a uh, pure class, uh, we would like to be able to load the module through the shared root loader, uh, you know, the, share, the, sh the shared pure loader so that multiple compartments can both end up make, you know, accessing that class by import, create instances and not have identity discontinuity. Yes. Uh, is the, to do that, we need to know that the exports of the module are pure uh, and that it only needs to import pure things. Uh, do you? It sounded like you have a way to avoid that. Requirement? Yes. Yes. Well, it depends. You know, it, it depends on the security, um, the, the the goal uh, and and the starting point. So, um, if we uh, say that uh, those different realms don't need to share higher order order object, anything else that is not data. Anything that is not uh, def as defined in this serializable object, they don't need to share anything. As they don't, well, um, but, but they don't need to share a class. Um, we not, okay. So 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 this is so now we're talking about goals that do not include avoiding dis identity discontinuity from your correct class. correct. We okay. can use the pure module as a fact as a mechanism to save multiple eval in each one of those compartments, but uh, the semantic that we want to put in place um, pr uh, don't require us to share those objects. We only want to put in contact items that are um, um, I can items, get a items that are uh, data. Um, there, there's a different angle of this um, that I, I'd like to also um, address during today's call, if possible. Um, so, so sandboxing with policies um, works really well for an SPA that does not navigate. Um, Sorry, SPA? Yeah, like single page application. Oh, okay. So, so what is the bootstrap model for navigatable, safe, um, um, you know, sandboxing uh, uh, an entire domain, let's say. Uh, you want your domain to be um, uh, contained. Um, are you going to initialize uh, policies every single page load? Or are you going to wrap an iframe um, and use SRC doc, like, did you think about those things on your end? On, on our side? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, if, you know, if you have a single page app and you use iframes, you're going to boot these iframes all the time, every page navigation and every page that you go or virtual page you go to because you're going to re-render things in, in the DOM, the DOM will change. Um, well, if you maintain, um, um, compartment and the compartment are not necessarily tied to um, a, a dumb element like an iframe. Do, these can exist and persist between pages. So the, 
although the output can disappear and reappear on the page, you could have a situation where you have a, um, you know, a framework that's loaded once and you can navigate through multiple pages and you never have to reload uh, those, uh, those, those frameworks included in, in those uh, realms. I think you're on mute. Sorry, uh, yeah, like I was actually uh, muted when I was asking. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I know for an SPA, um, you know, you have this, uh, if you use an iframe or if you use um, a container for the different routes of your page, you can maintain um, a single state as you navigate through different pages, which, which allows you to initialize once uh, things that are shared between your uh, views as long as your remote um, is able to catch URLs and, and, and you know, uh, pass them all, um, um, you know, um, uh, what was the word, uh, masquerade them uh, against the uh, single entry point on, on the right. actual remote. Right. Um, whereas um, I think what I'm concerned here is that how do we translate this um, mobility to a non-SPA site other than actually doing fetches and emulating an, an SPA approach um, uh, from, from real content. And, and so, so I, I was just asking, how would you, what would the model be for, for um, MPA or, uh, uh, you know, just PA, you know, um, page-based application or whatever? Um, so, what, so, what, is the, what is your case? What is your situation uh, you're trying to resolve? Um, I'm just thinking that if containment um, um, is, you know, initialized differently between when you navigate from one view to the next, um, because you have to manually or, or you have to have a mechanism where you're initializing containment uh, on every page and you want to make sure that it does not get um, um, you know, it, nothing executes before the containment initializes um, right. as you move from one page to the next. Chances right. are you will hit, um, um, you know, different loading, um, um, you know, uh, waterfalls, I guess, where in one page you would, you would, you would think that you, you have the containment that you have in all the pages and then you would um, have a different result just because yeah. of all these inconsistencies, um, sorry, of these uh, repetitive initializations right. of different DOMs, basically. Yes, and, and this is one of the reasons why we favor more model of uh, async communication between these containers. So, so the, the context we are in is, is, um, is, is very, um, the, the, the sandboxing we're doing is very tied to our um, application architecture, which is basically, um, something that uh, you would use with Drupal, you would use with WordPress, Wix, is you're dragging on the page um, uh, uh, higher order components that uh, represent an experience or an activity. And those, are, those could be iframe, but in our case, we don't use iframe. And uh, so, yeah, you're right. Uh, the behavior could be different depending on how the page, where they appear on the page and what order they load. And they do, they do because some of those uh, things do appear on multiple pages and the pages could be different. So we could have a, a, a sidebar widget that uh, is a weather widget that is um, on the right side on the page, on the center in another page, on the, on, at the bottom of another page. It's to read, it depends on the layout. So this is the, the type of application we're trying to, uh, to secure. The um, JF, are you, do you have as a goal least authority libraries, uh, you know, as motivated, for example, by the, you know, or by the event stream incident? Yes. So, yes. So, uh, so, though I, I would say that um, with the way the, the web is these days, uh, I don't think it has gained a, enough traction. This is still an uphill battle. So we have ways to design it before it actually becomes a target for security reviewers to say, you know, you have to come up with a mechanism to defend against third party libraries, right? 
there was a there was a tweet that I really like from Brendan. It was mentioning, uh, uh, you know, somebody was was tweeting to Brendan that uh, we should have never allowed third party scripts on the web. <laughs> And uh, and and the uh, the response uh, somebody said, well, Mark's uh, realm will solve the problem. And uh, and Brendan was uh, responded to that, and he said, uh, yeah, that will great. That will be great. Added if we add the next thing, which is a mechanism uh, for a third party script to not run as a first party uh, uh, rights, basically. Yes. So it, it's coming. Yeah, and could, I think could you, I think could you, it's, could you forward that to me? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm using that in the presentation because it's a, uh, it's so, okay. it's a condensed, forward-looking uh, uh, co communication, right? So, in order to link together multiple libraries, yes, um, uh, clearly you 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 want to give different libraries different authority, uh, but also clearly libraries are not like you know, iframes that can that are content to speak to each other through post message. They need yes. direct object object interaction. Yes. To be linked together. Um, I think and 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 now, you know, library A and B can both be using library C, where A and B are also given, you know, A, B, and C are each given different authorities. Yes. So exactly. Oh, exactly, well, and, and 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 this uh, this this is, you know, we can look at the app architecture as different layers and different scale of things. So when we talk about the containment of the Wix page, for example, this is really high level, large experience component that are dragged on the page and right. and, and the communication. Now, what happens inside one of these containment, as uh, if it's open for programmatic access, so a developer wants to do something in there collaborate in it then this is where we're going to to the system we, we you're talking about okay. and in in we, we've been working on some very interesting um model important model or or code sharing example between uh because on our platform what we say is code should be isolated so two um actors on a page should never see code for each other. But there are cases where this is desirable. Somebody in, an org, in, a, in, in a website might be able to install a library and then wants to use that library in their, uh, in their prog with programmatic access. So we're working on those finer grain uh, um, mechan security mechanism. So, so to my mind, the, the uh, for, I mean, I, I like your granularity distinction. I think it's very important. Yes. Um, for uh, the separate, um, you know, separate web things that each of whom think they're in their own iframe, um, those uh, don't. For for those, you don't need to avoid identity discontinuities, even for the primordials. Uh, as far as their interaction with each other is concerned, you can just give them their own separate root realms. You don't even, so you don't need SES or, yes. or compartments at all. You just need creation of separate root realms. Yes, but the, what we found is there's a huge advantage to still use compartment instead of root realm okay. uh, for performance, because first of all, we can have one set of uh, uh, JavaScript objects everywhere. Uh, like, I mean, uh, to say table seven, we freeze those things, we share them. And so all um, data or um, a JSON object or anything that needs to, to travel dates uh, can be um, safely uh, passed between those compartments without having identity discontinuity. I'm sorry, give me, give me the example of the things that you're passing between these units. Again. JavaScript, uh, uh, JSON uh, types, basically. Imagine uh, arrays, objects, um, uh, decorated with primitives, plus all of the types that are allowed okay. by the uh, serializable object in the structured clone, basically. So the structured clone copies. I don't. Are, are, you, are you not copying? We're not. Okay. 
Um, in some cases we will, but in some cases we can vet that the code actually generates as, as you, you know, to use your uh, common um, approach, you say, uh, if it's not frozen or fresh, it's rotten. Yeah. So in some cases, we have APIs that duplicate data before sharing them and presenting it in each compartment. In other areas, it just simply freezes the data. Okay, so, but it's up to the participants to decide whether to freeze or not, rather than up to the framework to enforce that things passed or frozen. It's the opposite. We okay. do it as the framework. Those are the framework level object that are part of the platform. Okay. Right. So, and so when, the, when it's the participant, when it's the people that we bring to the platform, we do not use a shortcut, the, the, the so-called shortcut with code review and, and um, enforcement of security guidelines for this you know, limited, carefully vetted code. Okay. Uh, for the f and this is where the pure module and and the uh, resource module come into play. You evaluate or you have a pure module, and that would be for third-party scripts for um, other things that are in the page. Okay, so you do have pure modules. We don't right now, but we have the concept on the security properties of the pure module. So just like the trusted trusted type, we we came at the same conclusion using different terminology, but we're retrofitting our uh, approach to use the better terminology, okay. right? Like we did with the realm and, and, and everything, yeah. So the, the, um, the mechanism that freezes the data that goes between these large grain units. Yes. Uh, does it enforce that the data is pure, or does it only enforce that the data is hardened? It's pure. And so how does it, how can it tell? Uh, because the, auth the origin of the data is uh, Salesforce carefully vetted code. Well, the origin of the data, I thought the, the, the origin of the data is the large grain untrusted code on each side? Uh, no, no, more, more, uh, the, for, for the shortcut, uh, sorry. So we have, we have really two systems. We have system to user mode and user to user. So user to user, it will have to be a clone. There's no other way around it. Uh, system to user is different. And we can, you, you, got, you get it, right? Yeah, so, so system to user, the data is generated by the trusted system. Yes. Uh, you, what about user to system? Um, the system, the, first of all, there's little of it and the system is defensive when it needs, where for the limited API okay. exposed. Okay, so the- um, and, and our goal again is to always to reduce the amount of system code to the minimum. Okay, so I don't understand for system to user and user to system, I don't understand why you need purity at all. Um, you just need defensiveness. For one thing, if you're enabling user code to call the system, then the user code already has access to something that is not pure. Um, yes, and yes and no. Um, uh, I think the in, in, in the way we say pure, we say pure data and pure, pure module, right? So there are, we've, been, we've been using that double te terminology and we find that using pure data is also a, an interesting concept when to, 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 because other things have been, uh, have been used to say, uh, it's, instead of pure data, it's, um, it's um, uh, inert data. Um, it's uh, 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 clone data and all of that. So um, in order for the source of the data can be shared, right? So we don't want to duplicate large amount of data if it's presented to two users. So uh, there's a decision in, in, in the design, depending on what feature, where we say we either clone, uh, so each user gets its own data or we deep freeze and each user gets, um, all users get the same data. 
So, okay, so, and, and the, it's the system that's deep freezing data generated by the system. Exactly. And by deep freeze, do you mean the same thing that we're now calling harden? Yes, basically. Okay. Basically, basically it's, um, but in our case, the, the, um, uh, because we've already frozen or, or we have a mechanism to freeze the primordials, then we don't, the deep freeze stops when we get to uh, the object prototype and, 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 and the array prototype or, or, and well, the other types that could happen on that data, like a date. Right. Yeah. So Harden does that as well. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the Harden code is basically just, just uh, derived from our, our common deep freeze code. So, okay. So. Yeah, we should probably update uh, at one point. Um, uh, the, but so, so user to user, you say you completely clone everything. So there's no shared object. Yes. That's the design we're going to. Yes. Okay. We currently, uh, we, we just launched a new platform, uh, the lightning web components. And when we were doing the circuit review last summer, when we started working on the, remember we, I was mentioning that, uh, you know, we need to define in the realm what the behavior of import. Uh, we realized that uh, putting code between um, those uh, uh, compartment was um, uh, putting those compartment into a communication was difficult. So we decided to disable it. And so it's not allowed currently. So users don't have a mechanism to talk to each other. Okay. Yeah. So, so this large grain unit that we're you know, referring to as a user, what is the actual term for this large grain unit? Um, we're working for the term. Currently, we, we, um, the way that the system has been implemented, there's been a, um, a semantic uh, uh, slippage in the sense that uh, code is defined in something called a namespace. So every user def gets an, a namespace and they put their code in the namespace. And, uh, and uh, when the compartment are created, the original system that was designed is each locker is, uh, for e each namespace is a locker created and all code defined in the locker, in the namespace execute in the locker associated with that namespace. Mm -hmm. So that was the original design. So uh, the code, the semantic definition of the code, uh, its location of where it's defined determine where it executes. And uh, so if I have a jQuery component, uh, a library running in the jQuery uh, namespace and ex execute in a jQuery compartment. And if I have a underscore library <laughs> that it runs, I would execute in an underscore compartment. Okay, now I'm, the, the underscore and jQuery, Yes. those are libraries, those are not, the like the sole occupant. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, but imagine they were like larger. They were they were part of a. I'm using those as names instead of using A and B. But imagine Alice and Carol. Our Alice as defined uh, Alice Foo, Alice Bar, Alice uh, so, so component the, components. They all execute in the same. Sorry. Okay. The namespace is a is a, is a, what kind of name mapping to what kind of thing? Uh, source code and compartment source code is mapped to a namespace and the compartment is mapped to the same namespace so there's an there's an identity it's, sorry, yeah, it's really what, really hard to get what, around i'm sorry what what are the names in the namespace what are the names of namespace i'm sorry what is the question i don't i mean so so there's a lot of namespaces that we right. have, and I'm just, I don't understand what this namespace is. So there's yeah. a lexical environment, there's a global object, there's yes. an import namespace mapping from, from uh, specifiers to, to uh, module, to- They're all the same. So if, a co if Alice, Alice has a, uh, is an org, if she has a namespace, she might decide to call Alice for simplicity. All of her code are in uh, the Alice namespace. And it's defined there, um, and all of our code execute in a sandbox that would be called Alice. So the ex the the, con the execution context is the same as where the code is defined. Does a namespace a, a namespace is 
like an SES compartment that has a global ob has its own global object and has its Correct. own so the compartment. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So well, it's all equal, and what we're changing is that 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 model where the code can be defined in one place, but can execute in a different one. Okay. So that's never been done before, and we, we're implementing those rules currently. And it, it it's, it's ba basically will resolve a lot of problems that developers have currently. It means that uh, what, what we will base uh, the system is on a mutual trust system. So if Alice has written some code that Bob wants to use, Alice has to make her first her code available by a mechanism. She must say, I'm allowing people to import my code because some people might not want that on, 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 of all the players on the page. And Bob has to say uh, more than just an import. It ha he has to say in his, uh, comp in his package definition uh, that he's, uh, he's, he's uh, agreeing to import from Alice. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, any import statement can then uh, function for uh, uh, importing from Alice. And that prevents accidental mistake where... Um, you know, some some code could execute. Uh, an error can be made in a compartment uh, and in, in a component that uh, a module that has a, a typo could be made. And instead of using Alice, you do, you lose uh, Alice too, something which is, could be a different person. So, so we're working on those rules currently. Okay. So right now, you're talking about the rules for different modules that are linked together. You're not talking about the interaction between the large grain units. Is that exactly, correct? exactly. Okay, okay, good. So, um, so there's a, that led us to have a clear, from the original model, to have a clear distinction between those large unit, which are execution context, and are for uh, the Wix, like you drag something on a page, you'll drag, you build those experience components. So that's one use case. And the other use case, which is the programmatic access, and then, uh, then yeah, you have those rules for for import and um, all of the work that uh, we we did with um, with you with uh, the reflection around pure module and uh, least authority are going at that level. Mm -hmm. So we, we we so there's really a need instead of mushing everything together to really separate uh, the system in in two style of usage. Right, so, so, the, so, retur so return it, so, so once again, um, uh, the, uh, being very clear about the difference between th these two granularities, for the large granularity units, um, you're putting them all within one frozen root realm, one SES realm, yes. uh, for efficiency. Yeah, but, exactly. But since you're copying all data that goes between them and the data as received is always pure, uh, they can't tell that they're in one root realm. Exactly. If they, you actually put them in, in different root realms, they would not be able to perceive an identity discontinuity. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, good. So, lo so logically, it's as it, the large grain units really is really are as if they are in separate root realms. Exactly. Okay. As if, um, and, uh, but, but then we have the, uh, the, the perf, the huge perf benefits that uh, we obtained right from the beginning when we dropped iframes uh, for evaluation uh, and the identity is going to be just between system mode and, and those uh, uh, various containers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then uh, now with pure module and the fact that you can uh, probably define something that can even be loaded and evaluated outside of um, any realm in the in the in the say the 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 root realm is window. If the window is prepared in a given way uh, that it abides to um, to the an immutable frozen realm, then you can uh, we can you can envision using um, uh, script tags to basically load uh, code uh, uh, of of frozen uh, or, or of pure modules 
in that environment without any, any confinement. And then you could potentially get the benefits of uh, by code caching, which um, if you have to use an evaluator, uh, you, you, you don't have. Uh, currently browsers don't say, seem to support this case very, very well. So there's, there's, you know, there's something, it, I think it's going in the right direction. Was using a term, it's like all yeah. the stars are starting to align on, on, on a few things when, when we work at that level. And the amount of work that we'll have to do for, to make the browser natively support that model is, is, is becoming uh, uh, manageable conceptually. And like if we were to, if we were able to have the realm uh, at the browser level and some kind of mechanism for uh, purity, um, it, it would go a long way, right? Are you currently uh, working on the Mato or the equivalent of the Mato or the equivalent of Locker? Uh, the, um, so for the DOM level, uh, we've been discussing in the meeting and uh, Sala and Michael Fig have been exploring mechanism. Interesting, okay. Uh, uh, for uh, you know, Agoric, uh, we're interested in that eventually, eventually, uh, but right now our focus is on, uh, you know, Server, the JavaScript API. Um, yeah. yeah, basically is, is on non-browser JavaScript is, okay. is the focus of Agoric yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. We, de we definitely are interested in the other one long term. Okay, yeah. right, right. And there's still work to do at that level, right? Right. And it's the uh, the, the the work that gives uh, currently the biggest perf um, and and it's usually where, uh, well, the work we've been doing has been alleviating a lot of uh, customer issues. Yeah. Uh, by the way, do you have any numbers or measurements or anything about how much faster it is to create, let's call it a virtual iframe rather than an actual iframe? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't captured that because the use case are so different. Okay. Yeah. We would, I would love to, um, you know, by, by having the, uh, higher level container on the page. We'd love to bring them closer to the iframe so that uh, a given developer could more easily switch between an iframe and a, a locker, uh, depending on uh, what suits best for them and um, in terms of what is supported uh, by locker, what can be uh, cannot be supported by Locker due to technological limitation. So um, yeah, so we're working at that just to make these two environments more the same. So it's so that it's really a, a developer decision instead of an every uh, uh, a, a, an obligatory decision. For example, the data system could be exposed inside of an iframe uh, by loading a, a skeleton library that would know how to communicate with the outside. What is the status of the uh, Salesforce uh, SES repository? Oh, um, it's it's there. Um, I think it's a license, just a licensing comment that needs to go through. Uh, but we're getting more people, um, so we might be able to <laughs> unblock that. We just, I was just so busy with uh, the the items I've been discussing about this uh, okay. this so, new mechanism of code sharing that we've, we've been exploring. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, so the 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 SES repository, the Salesforce SES repository. Yeah. Uh, is the content there uh, um, is pretty much as it as it's been for a while? Yes, no, no major change there. I think it was in a good last time we talked. It was in good enough uh, position. There's obviously the, all the documentation that needs to be updated, a few license file, but um, okay. I think it's yeah, it's un unless you've seen something there, I think it's in a good good position. Okay. Yes, um, and uh, it does not. It's 
it, its only notion of mutually suspicious code is evaluable scripts. It does not contain any kind, any kind of rewrite from module text to script text. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay. And no, it, it, it does detect that, uh, yes, yes, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't have the, the mechanism for import, basically. Mm -hmm. And it also doesn't have the, uh, uh, what I call the bleach that you're doing on the, <laughs> on the JavaScript API. So uh, um, the, uh, the uh, I think you called it at one time cleaning. Taming. The cleaning, so <laughs> you're removing the, um, Oh, oh, extra okay. property from the language we don't we don't have that in there okay okay um okay yeah. um uh there's some really dangerous stuff in um uh the um uh javascript that you get from v8 you don't clean it right you know, like the uh, the the bizarre uh, error stack trace customization things, the static methods on the error object. Right. You can, you can, those, those are uh, quite abusable. Um, and, you know, and there's other things, but in any case, that's, that's, um, uh, that's fun. And when we, as we, as we reconcile our systems, we'll, we'll, we'll get all that together. And we've done all the cleaning in such a way that uh, for each thing that we remove, um, the, there is an option not to remove it so that we want to basically have all the differences between what you guys need and what we need, um, uh, be configurable with options so that we can end up reconciling on one source tree, one repository that serves all of our needs. Um, nice. have you looked at, um, our, um, design for a, module to a valuable script uh, rewrite so that we can safely load on top of the uh, the realm shim yes okay I you know it, it's a lot more material that I could absorb over the past few months but it's um, I think it's going the right direction and also what what I like is it it's all built in um, uh, it's it the code is sufficiently independent of the the realm and the freezing and the cleaning so all of those things are um, when when you get in one uh, scope or one set of concerns you you can forget so you get into cleaning you can forget about uh, freezing you know, or harding so yeah so that that's also very well done on that point yeah okay great great. Yeah, um, I actually got the um, did a little bit of um, uh, a little bit more fleshing out of the um, uh, the safe module design, but um, it's uh, mostly I've been focused elsewhere. So, so, but um, uh, the nice thing about there, there's actually something that it's, it got very much uh, inspired by the uh, the WASM module API in the sense that there's a um, module, there's a static module object that represents sort of all the static information needed to figure out how to link these things together um, uh, such that you can uh, build all sorts of remapping and wiring policy, uh, not by, by intercepting callbacks, uh, but rather just by looking at the descriptions of the individual modules and, and following a policy about how to wire them together. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and the, uh, you can give them each their own namespace with regard to uh, addressing the others, check that the, um, the imports and exports are correctly mapped, check that statically. Um, and and, and um, uh, then instantiate it. Um, uh, so the uh, so the nice thing is that you can populate these namespaces with the um, the modules describing their imports and exports. You can populate the namespaces to wire them in any order, and then once it's fully populated 
then check that all the imports and outputs uh, are correctly mapped to each other. Basically, you, 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 you create the modules, then you link them together. Um, you link together modules that are already created, and then you validate the linkage. Interesting. Is that, um, is that happening at the package level? Uh, right now, it is not. Um, uh, the, uh, the actual mechanism that I've created uh, allows, enables you to give uh, each individual module its own namespace, uh, namespace in, bo in both sentences that we just, senses that we just talked about. Uh, you, you, uh, each module uh, is turned into from a static module to a module instance. You get from a static module to a module instance, um, uh, you uh, uh, give it a um, there's a, you give it an, a, a, a realm evaluator. So an evaluator that takes a, a source string and an endowments. Uh, so, so exactly the evaluator that we get from our realm API. Uh, and you give it an, an object to be populated by other module instances. Um, uh, as, as a namespace to go from that module's local specifier names to other module instances. So populating that is where you express all of the linkage and rewiring policy. Right, okay. Um, okay. And, um, uh, and I did it, and, and the, um, uh, the thing that was really hard was getting all of the live binding semantics adequately right. Okay. Uh, so we've got the the live bindings themselves are are seem to be right. Um, uh, the uh, temporal dead zone is not quite right. And within the overall goals, uh, in order to have an efficient translation um, that does not rewrite uh, function text at all, right. that's the other thing is that the function text is not rewritten at all. It's pr completely preserved. So a two string on a function gives you back original, exactly the source code that the user wrote. Right. Um, uh, uh, so between that and the efficiency goals, uh, there was no way to preserve temporal dead zone of an imported variable. So, uh, so by the JavaScript semantics, uh, if module X imports A from module Y, then uh, if A dereferences X before the exported X binding has been initialized, then uh, you, you're supposed to get a reference error. Uh, there's no way to emulate that efficiently with a non-invasive rewrite. So instead, um, uh, uh, that case, specifically that case, uh, will give you back an undefined if you read the variable early rather than a reference error. Okay. Um, and uh, I, you know, I consider that to be within the overall goals, that one, that one I was willing to sacrifice. Yeah, it seems reasonable. Yeah. Uh, JD? Um, uh, the, uh, so you've done a bunch of work on uh, module to script rewriting, obviously with ESM. Um, uh, 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 I don't remember if you had feedback on that particular trade-off. For me, the, um, for rewriting, uh, the, the, the only thing I've tried to do is reduce instrumentation around a vowel. Um, that seems to be the tricky one. Uh, import is necessary. Uh, eval is the one that uh, hasn't really worked out. Um, I, I have worked with Sala uh, to uh, look at how he approaches it, uh, but I haven't had time to implement that yet. Okay. When you say eval, are you talking about direct or indirect? 
Um, I do both, but I talk about, um, for me, it's sanitizing the content that goes into a vow or, or transforming the content that goes into a vow. So I have to support dynamic import uh, being avowed. So I have to transform that. There's probably some other things, but that's the main one I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you preserve um, a temporal dead zone? I do. Um, uh, through a, uh, a couple different ways. I try to leverage the, the, um, the built-in uh, behaviors where possible, else I instrument to uh, simulate the temporal dead zone. Um, but I, 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 I define my, value, my bindings with a let. Um, so if you were to also do like a const later on, then it would blow up. I instrument, uh, I, I do a parse check to make sure you're not assigning directly to the, the bindings, um, uh, which, would, which throws the appropriate errors if you do. Because I, I wrap an instrument to detect assignment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I throw all the appropriate errors. I have all the temporal dead zone stuff in there. Um, uh, but I, I do it a little bit differently than y'all do where you, um, do like a global assignment and then use your proxy to, to look up stuff. Right. You do it by actually rewriting each assignment. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, like <laughs> I, I have a, 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 if it is an assignment, I basically have a function that I wrap around the assignment and then pass the value of the assignment through just in case it's needed. And there I can do some checks on some things. Mainly I use it to, to, to signal to the, uh, getter setters that they, there has been an update or a possible update, um, and then it triggers all of that that uh, machinery. Okay. Yeah, but but I do. I I um I basically just throw more instrumentation at it, and that seems to tackle it. But again, the more instrumentation you have, the harder it is to do other things. So. Right. Right. Um, yeah. The 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 thing that you know, motivated um, a lot of my approach was uh, at Agoric, we've repeatedly gotten screwed up by um, uh, rewrites introducing semantic differences that the rewriting, uh, the rewriter assumed it wouldn't induce, uh, combined with lack of documentation, so we could not know, you know, so suddenly our security properties depended on preserving semantics when the rewriters would not state what semantics they were guaranteeing to preserve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine, mine are, um, the, the rewrite's pretty basic. It just does a wrapping around uh, the assignment. Um, so, so far I haven't run into uh, problems. I haven't run into rewrite problems in a while. Um, I also run it through, uh, test 262 and all of that. Well, just, just the import stuff. Um, and I haven't run into any weird um, behaviors there either. So, okay. yeah. Okay, great. Well, it's uh, two forty-eight. It seems like there's a lull in the conversation, and our goal was to um, uh, stop by two fifty. So I think that um, uh, this seems like a good uh, moment to adjourn. Uh, JDD, can I have a word with you after this is over? Sure. Let me go grab a power supply, and I'll be able to chat. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah, we'll figure that out.
Okay, and Thank you guys. yeah, and Sally, you wanted to uh, talk, so why don't we just establish a separate connection uh, after we hang up here? Yeah, well, well we, we could do breakout rooms. Um, uh, I wanted to try that feature, so um, it's basically splitting the meeting up. Um, okay. But we, we, we could connect at a later time if that's, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's already almost time, so. Okay, I, I would prefer that because I'm actually uh, in a hurry to get back to something. Sure, sure. Okay. okay. And, and Sally, do you need help with the trusted type? Are you pushing that spec? Are you working on it? Um, actually, no, I, I was just interested in, uh, um, like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying the service worker approach for containment. Oh, I see. Okay. And I'm, I'm hoping trusted types would be a different avenue altogether. Yeah. We yeah. don't use uh, service workers, so um, take that as a data point. Yeah. 